Hi, I'm Sarah Tegeby with Dutton Publicity, and I'm delighted to be here today with Asha Lemmy, whose debut novel, 50 Words for Rain, is out in September. Hi, Asha. Hi, Sarah. Since this is your debut novel, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. We'd love to know more. Sure. My name is Asha. I'm 25 years old. I am obsessed with cats. I live in New York City, and I used to work on the agency side of book publishing, but now I am a full-time writer. Did that experience in agenting inform your writing or this, the journey in this side of publishing or has it felt like a different adventure? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, I got a peek behind the curtain and I can't pretend that that wasn't helpful to me. But at the same time, it's a very different process when you're actually the one who has to create that work from start to finish. So it did give me some insight, but it definitely wasn't a cheat code to a novel. Um, 50 Words for Rain is such a beautiful title, and I think it invites readers into the story right away. It invites questions right away. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what 50 Words for Rain means and why you chose that as the book's title. So 50 Words for Rain refers to a saying in Japanese language that there are 50 words to describe rain because it rains so often. And I just thought it was a very appropriate and beautiful metaphor to describe the various trials and tribulations that we go through, all of us go through in our lives, and that Nori goes through in particular. Nori is your main character. What are some of the challenges she faces throughout the novel? So Nori is the illegitimate daughter of a Japanese aristocrat and an African-American United States soldier. So her life was never going to be straightforward. She is raised by her mother's parents, her maternal grandparents, at their imperial estate where she is confined to an attic because her existence is a shameful secret and they don't want anyone to find out about her. And it's not actually until the arrival of her older half-brother, Akira, that her life really gets a chance to begin. That's one of the things I loved about this novel is that there was such a focus on sibling relationships with, which I think is really rare. Um, we see a lot of parental and child relationships. We have see a lot of romantic relationships, but this really was a focus on peers and what being born into different circumstances can mean. So tell me a little bit about focusing on siblings and what that juxtaposition meant to you or what you wanted to explore in that way. Well, I don't think anyone really knows you as well as your sibling. I think they get to see you from beginning to end, so to speak, and they see you on a far more direct level than maybe a parent would, because I don't really believe that parents can ever be truly objective about their children. So it's always fascinated me how you can have so many conflicting feelings towards your sibling, but ultimately, you know, there's no one who knows you better. and there's just a lot to explore there for a novelist like myself who is interested in exploring conflict. Absolutely. And I know you were working on this novel for a long time. Um, I believe you started when you were 16? I did, yes. Much to the detriment of my GPA in 11th grade. I think you did the right thing. You did the right thing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Um, could you tell us a little bit about how the inspiration came to you over that period of time, over 10 years? Sure. So it definitely wasn't a lightning bulb moment. It didn't all come to me um, at once. So Nori was the first character that I came out with. And then the setting of Japan quickly followed because at the time I was studying uh, Japanese language and history. And then the idea of introducing a sibling came to me. And from there, you know, slowly it all kind of came together and ultimately became the story that it is today. What are some of the books you hold dear to your heart or might have informed this novel that you wrote? So when I was a kid, I was completely obsessed with the Chronicles of Narnia series by C.S. Lewis. I actually named my cat Aslan. And, you know, there's obviously great sibling relationships there. And I think that was probably a bigger influence on me than I realized until probably recently. Mm -hmm. And then when I got a little older, I really, really enjoyed The Kite Runner. That's one of my all-time favorite books. And 
I recently read Pachinko, which I absolutely loved. So I read a lot. There's really too many to name, but that's just kind of a few. And I know that libraries have played a special role in your life. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So when I was a kid, I was a very voracious reader. And originally my parents were taking me to the bookstore, but they quickly realized that it was my book habit or their mortgage payment. So they got me a library card and every Sunday they would drop me off at the library in the morning and they would pick me up right before closing. All the librarians knew who I was. They'd have recommendations for me. They walked me across the street to buy ice cream and they were just really a second family to me. And I'm immensely grateful for the existence of libraries. They're so important. I love that. Librarians walking you across the street above and beyond the call of duty. Absolutely. Well, that was good ice cream. Good ice cream. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm so excited for 50 Words for Rain to be out in the world and to hear what everybody thinks. Thank you so much.